First, what is your big take on what we know so far? Well, thanks so much for having me. We hope to see consequences because this really appears to be a crypto criminal enterprise and it makes Bitcoin look bad. But look at this. I mean, SBF still not in custody. We're learning that his parents buying up tens of millions of dollars in property, but they were college professors. I didn't know that job paid Ivy League so educated, well. right? Right. And so this, this is really a problem, though, of the fiat mentality, this idea of printing money, which they were printing tokens and chasing yield. Everyone wants to get rich quick. And that's not what Bitcoin is about. Bitcoin is this technology network that's quickly growing around the world, offering property rights to people. And it is an asset that has no issuer that you can self custody. Okay, so you basically are saying that market you believe is unaffected by this. When it comes to the cryptocurrency world and what the future holds, our colleague Charles Payne, who also has joined us on this program talking a lot about this, he had a very strong warning this morning. Listen. You cannot have hope that you're going to get your money back on this. You should pursue it legally. Uh, I would speak to senators, congresspeople, because this can never happen again. And that the system is designed for this to happen over and over again because the American public is the, we're the ultimate dupes. We're the ultimate dumping ground for this kind of crap. And that's why it happens. I mean, that's, it's a pretty serious warning. And, and a lot of these investors, some of them smaller investors, Absolutely. but a large chunk of their life savings That's might right. never see a dollar back. That's right, and fraud and criminality cannot be tolerated. That's what's really unfortunate, is the retail investors out there who heard you know, celebrities endorsing this, who probably don't really understand the difference between crypto and Bitcoin. They don't understand the nuances. I just have a question for you though. How did he get away with this for so long? This is somebody who, by the way, you were approached by this company, you told me earlier, to get involved, and you said no, why? Because I don't want to be involved in the crypto casinos that are printing their own money through these tokens and then wash trading them to inflate the value and then essentially defrauding investors as a result. I really had to study and learn about Bitcoin and the nuances within the technology so that I can learn how to take self-custody, which is the beauty. It's the technological revolution that you don't have to have a, a third party issuer and you don't have to have a third party that you trust in order to custody it. And so Satoshi sort of gave us this gift and yet people are trusting these companies because they're chasing yield because really our money like has been corrupted the crypto by market is peer to peer though without a bank transaction right it's supposed to take the middleman out yeah. but when you introduce those layers of trust you introduce security risks and that's exactly what is happening but again people are chasing yield because the financialization of our world over the last few right. decades has really corrupted well money. they've been looking for alternative investments they mm -hmm. saw a u.s right. stock market that's gotten hit by this inflation crisis and many other uh, many other things, and they were looking for yield, to your point, somewhere else. Finally, I want to ask you, you know, put on your economic hat and ask you about this Thanksgiving feast that's coming up. Hard to believe prices are up 20% year over year. I mean, it's going to cost folks a lot of money to put this meal on the table. Uh, and you're looking at prices of just about everything that have gone up. Everything that goes into your stuffing, your turkey's gone up, dinner roll, pumpkin pie up double digits. And obviously the price to get wherever you're going is up with gas prices sky high. And you've got a dinner for 10, which I think a lot of people probably think this is low, but remember, this is just the government pricing out the very basics for your feast. $64 this year versus just a couple years ago when it was $46 to feed 10 people. Your reaction? Well, look, we used to have cheap labor and cheap energy. And right now the Fed is focused on destroying demand, but we've done very little to address the supply side. And what we really need to do in order to crush inflation and drive down prices is invest in the critical inputs on the supply side of the, of the chain. And so that means that we need to invest in energy. Look, it's ridiculous for the United States to be energy starved and to be tapping into our strategic petroleum reserve to the extent that we have. We have a massive supply of energy energy, but what we do lack is the political will to access it. And so we really need to invest in the things that strengthen this country in terms of production so that we can drive down uh, costs because we can print all the money that we want, but we can't print things like energy. And we can't print more trains to run if this strike happens. And that could greatly affect the pain that we're already feeling as a result of all of this. Uh, Natalie Brunel, great to get your thoughts on all of that. And good to have you here in studio in New York. Thanks so Good much to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. John.